we're going to uh, begin this, the, the session now, um, and we're going to open up with a word of prayer, and then we'll continue if everyone has their, uh, yeah, this, you can follow along. You need one? Oh, he needs one. We'll let everyone come in and get their seats, and we'll just open it with a word of prayer. Dear Father Jehovah, we come to you in a sad occasion, thankful that you have uh, given us such a, a gift, a life that we found in, in our dear friend, family, mother, aunt, cousin, Ma, as everyone knows her. We ask that your Holy Spirit be with us, be with the family as we begin the the funeral uh, session for Sandra Walker, better known as Ma. So please give us peace of mind and like you are, Jehovah, you're orderly and, and so help us to be orderly. Help us to be maintain a peace, understanding that as sad a time this is, we have your spirit to help us get through it. So we leave this prayer in your care and keep by way of your son, our now reigning king, Christ Jesus. Amen. So we'll begin with a, this is a song that Ma, she really enjoyed this song. And we thought it would be suitable and appropriate to play for you. I'm sorry, we're going to get the vocals to it first.
<clears throat> um, now we'll continue with uh, the reading, unless someone has acknowledgement of cards. But we'll do the reading, and this will be done by Bertha Mitz. Good afternoon, everyone, to the pulpit, to my father above, who is the head of my life. On behalf of Sandra Walker, I'm here to speak and to read the contributors. Okay. I'm going to read the obituary first. Sandra, Sandra Ann May Walker, age 68, of Chicago, Illinois, resident Zion, Illinois. She left her earthly life on January 27, 2022. Sandra was born December 22, 1953, in Chicago, Illinois, to the late Fred and Georgia Hayes. She was the sixth child of ten. One son, Kevin, preceded her in death. Five brothers, Alfred, Lloyd, Stanley, Leon, and Marsha. One sister, Freddie, preceded her in death. Sandra, husband, Leonidas, Tom, of 30 years, preceded her in death. Sandra, mom, was a caring, loving wife, mother, daughter, grandmother and aunt. Sandra raised five of her own children. She was a cook at several woman shelters and school districts. She enjoyed cooking. It was her passion. She also was a caregiver to families and others. Sandra was known as mom to all that encountered her. She treated everyone as her own. Mom had a huge heart full of love to share with everyone. She touched many lives and will deeply miss, will be deeply miss, be missed. Sandra lived to cherish her memories, her five children, Leonidas, Carol Walker, Latanya, Clinton, Robo of Tulsa, Oklahoma, Latrina, Latif, Sanford, uh, Montevallo, Alabama, Latanya Phoebe Walker, and Timothy Chandra Walker. Seventeen grandchildren, Anthony, Jennifer Walker, Cherie, Alicia, Clinton Jr., Tashina, Jasmine, DeMonte, Demian, Leonidas III, Xavier, Le'Ara, Laquana, Darius, 
Laquina, Darius, Destiny, Deshana, Narana, Narana, Naya, and Nayala. <laughs> y'all, uh, yeah, hey, <laughs> y'all with these names. 26 great grandchildren, what a blessing. One sister, Gail Hayes. One brother, one brother, Gregory. Janella Hayes of Buffalo, New York. Six sister in law, Gloria, Audrey, Sharon, Debbie, Bernice, and Barbara. Two brother in laws, Freddie, Tony, Walker, and Kelly West. Sandra shared a special bond with her niece, Laquita Tyler, and Tiffany, and a host of niece, Napu cousin, and friends who were truly. Miss her dearly, our angel. I'm getting hot, so let me. Okay. From the children, a letter to our dear Sandra A. Walker, Mom. Mom, you are everything. Our protector, our comforter, our nourish, our first friend, our number one supporter, our rock. You were the best mother any child could ask for. We will miss your words of encouragement, your touch of gold, your sweet kisses and warm touch, and most of all, your unconditional love will ever, forever be remembered from the children. I remember when you took me to school, and I knew that our bond would be inseparable and continue to grow until we were separated. I knew then that you were a young lady and carried carry big sisters. I remember good, good sometime we had together. I lost with your words, but you know where my heart is for you. I will miss your beautiful smile and hear your soft voice. Your heart was huge and caring. You are glow of my love and joy. I will never forget you, and I will always love and miss you until we meet again in heaven. Your babies, Butter, Greg, Baby Brother, Nile, Baby Hank, Baby Hayes. <laughs> gotcha. My dear aunt, my dear aunt, my dearest aunt, what a blessing and privilege it was to have had you in a part of our family. How I idolized you as a child. You were so beautiful, warm, caring, and loving. You always said I was the first baby. Then four months later, you had your own. You always treated me as your own until you left a remarkable legacy here on earth. Know that you would never be forgotten, and I will always love all of us in the family. I was so privileged to have had you as my special aunt. That means so much to me. If only we could... If only we would, could have you longer. I am so grateful someday I will see you again. And, and I will see you again and get a spin eternity with you. Rest well. Your loving niece, Laquita Keita. Love. Okay, a wonderful grandmother. We had a wonderful grandmother, one who never really grew old her smile was made of sunshine her heart was so gold was solid gold her eyes was bright and shiny stars and in her cheeks fair roses you see we had a wonderful grandmother and that the way and that's the way it would always be but take he take heed because she will she's still keeping an eye on all of us so let make let's make sure she would like what she sees. Okay, I'm standing up here. My name is Bert. This was one of my best friends. I always loved her like a sister once we became best friends. I'm a mess. But I want to say to the grandchildren and children, y'all had a good mother and a good grandmother. She was all for y'all, more so than for herself. I'm going to miss her, and I know y'all going to miss her, but just ask God for the strength. If you 
call on God, you can get through. He went and took her. If he know y'all wouldn't have made it without him, but he know y'all can make it without him. So you got to ask him, and you got to call on him. If you don't never call on him, he ain't never going to show up. But I'm going to miss her so bad. I'm going to miss her. I'm going to miss from talking to her. She was a good cook. I thought I was one of the best, but I ran into my competition. <laughs> I slept with her. Uh, when I go, get, go out and stay out late, I can go by her house no matter what time it was. She'll let me sleep. She'll feed me. She fed anybody. She had a good heart. I'm a miss her, too. I'm a miss her. But God is still a good God. So she left y'all in good hands. She made sure of that. So I'm asking y'all to carry on what she left behind. Love your family. Uh, because of the time that <clears throat> we thought we were going to be showing videos, we, we have time to uh, see if anyone has any remarks they would like to, to speak about. I, I can start. Um, <clears throat> wh where do I start? Um, well, I started at the beginning of my relationship with, with Ma. I used to call her Miss Walker. Tanya and I, we met. I was 14 years old, and uh, I was scared. Oh, my goodness. You don't want to meet the parents, boy, <laughs> especially at that young age. But I ran into and got on the bus heading to Tanya's house, and lo and behold, there was Ma sitting at the back. My knees almost gave out when I walked back there, but I went on back, and I sat there, and we had about a half an hour ride. And in that half an hour, I could feel the love that she had. And that moment on, she called me son-in-law. And uh, that, that meant a lot, a lot to me. I grew up with nothing but love around me. And uh, I know what real love is. And being a part of this family for so long, I was privileged to have two sets of parents, not just one. My love, my and Pop left a legacy behind, and they, they're sitting right here. And I know, I have no doubt that they're going to make it. Each of my brothers and sisters sitting right there, one after me, my wife, we shared a lot of good times, but they're going to be okay because their parents was Ma and Pop. They ain't got no other choice. But Ma has touched a lot of lives, and I see it now. She would be happy to see all the lives she's touched. And I know some of them, you guys started out as children, just like me. And Ma never changed. She was straightforward. She had something to tell you, she gonna tell you. <laughs> and you didn't think about being disrespectful because you see her sons right there. <laughs> and, and her husband, you see her sons right there. Um, it was just something that you just, she, you was drawn to Ma. Ma just drew people in. <laughs> we often wonder, why him, Ma? Why her, Ma? But she sees things in people. So I just want to share that. I got so many, but there's many others who have some, so I'm going to leave it to you guys. Kita. 
or whoever wants to say anything, because I keep going. Uh, who is that? Oh, Jennifer, come on up here, Jennifer. These masks, boy, they put everybody in disguise. Hello. Today is not a good day at all. It hasn't been good days lately ever since we got some news, but like Clint was saying, just being privileged into this family, it's a blessing. He, t him too, and I, I'm an in-law as well, but mom has never ever made me feel that way. I entered this family at a very, very young age where I had a lot of issues with my own mother, but Ma, she just vo she took in that void, and she loved me as her own. And not only was she, for those who don't know me, I'm married to Sandra's firstborn grandson, and we spent a, we spent in a lifetime together. But not only was she my my grandma is what I called her because I always told her. You ain't old enough to be my grandmother. <laughs> and um, she was my friend, you know. Me and Ma, I would sit there. I could vent to her. I could be myself to her. She had my secrets. And this was just a, a, a big hit to heart, you know, for my husband, Anthony, for all of us. And... Thank you, Bertha, for those uplifting words, letting us know that, you know, God got us. But I want to say that I love you, Pop, Tanya, Trina, Toya, Timmy. I love y'all so much, all the babies. Oh, gosh. And, again, I, I love you, Ma, so much. So much. Gosh, thank you. Where's Keila? You want to say? I don't know where Keila is. You want to say something, Keila? No? You okay? Okay. Well, uh, What time is it? Okay. Okay. Well, the slide that we were going to uh, play, we'll be trying to play that at the repast. Um, it's beautiful. Uh, Trina, Tanya, all of them sat around and gathered pictures and moments, and it is just beautiful to see. Uh, and it, it will play. It just we ran into a glitch here, but uh, those who happen to come to the repast, you'll get the opportunity to see it. It, it. You know, see mom at different points of her life with all of her grandchildren, great grandchildren, and children. So um, I hope you all get an opportunity to see that. Um, but I guess now. Um, we just move right into the – no one has any more remarks. I just want to make sure – okay, y'all going to listen to me talk then. <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> yeah, anybody in this family, they know I'm a talker. I, I ain't met a stranger yet. Um, but, you know, uh, you, you, you think back on all the times that uh, you made decisions. And sometimes those decisions, they didn't go the way I planned them to go. But Ma, she always seemed to make it seem a lot less painful for some reason. Somehow she was able to do that. 
And when you think about it, and you and I sit back and I go over times in my life that uh, I talked to my cousin. We talked a lot because I was always over at the house. Um, she just made things seem. This word I'm looking for. Easy, if you will, or you just had to be there. You just had to talk to her. And if you had the privilege to talk to her, you would know what I'm trying to say. So I ain't got to say it. You know what I'm trying to say. Um, Timmy, my love, Timmy. <laughs> Boy. Hey, Timmy was her baby, boy. And uh, she always worried about Timmy. Like any parent would. She worried about all her children. Me and Trina was sitting around with all of us sitting up the other night talking about how Sam was the type of parent that if her child, Trina, didn't come home, she didn't sit in the house wondering, I wonder where she at. She would make Tom get up. <laughs> let's go find where Trina is at. <laughs> and she used to try to hide. She had some honeycomb hideouts. <laughs> but when Ma came stomping, and she didn't have to find out. She just had to go to where her friends were. <laughs> and when Ma looked at you and said, where my daughter at? Oh, there go one of them right now. <laughs> yeah, oh, she, she knew what I was going to say. Yeah, oh, yeah. She knew what I was going to say. Where she at? They wasn't going to lie to her. They took her straight to her. <laughs> they had to suffer the consequences with their friend, but that was a little easier than suffering the consequences with Sam. But, you know, it, it's, just, it's just a beautiful thing to uh, be able to uh, just, just have a relationship with Sam. And, you know, I, 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 I think about this. As sad as it may be for us, and I'm not going to preach, um, Sam is at peace. Sam's in, she has endured to her end. And when you do that with the heart that she has, that she had, she can't be nothing but the best place possible in God's memory. And so, as sad as the time it is, I'm not going to be too sad because she's run her course. I got to now worry about mine because I'm trying to get there to where she was at so that I can see her again. I'm still fighting. She don't have to fight. She don't have to worry. She ain't got to stress. She ain't got no anxiety. She ain't got nothing but peace laying down, waiting till as that song that my love so much till he calls. And when he call her, she going to get up because God already said, death ain't got no hold on him. And he doesn't. He doesn't have a hold on him. He sent his son down here to show us that. So we ain't got to be too sad. We can, it's actually, we can be at peace. Because how many times y'all wait up, waiting, thinking, I wonder, is my okay? Is she okay? Well, she's okay. She's in the best place possible. Again, in God's memory. So, this is time to just reminisce, think back, to enjoy the times we had with her, to learn from it, because she's always teaching you something in the, what she says. Whether you know it or not, she's teaching you something every time saying open her mouth. And even when she didn't open her mouth, them looks she gives you, they teaching you something. <laughs> oh, yeah. We got that so many times. <laughs> it always teaches us something. So when we're thinking back on those times as these days go by, because it ain't easy. It ain't going to be easy. It ain't going to be quick. You can't, how can you get over the love that Sam said show quickly? If you do, you really didn't know Sam. And I'm going to just let you know, you didn't know her. But just know that she, she's at, at peace right now. Got nothing else to worry about.
She just hoping that right now, if she could, and if she can't, she would hope that everybody in here would do the same. So find something to be a reflection of your creator toward people. Something. She had the best heart ever. And I know God seen that because we seen it. So why wouldn't she be in his memory? She was a reflection of one of his most beautiful qualities. As the scriptures say, God, it don't say he has love. He say he is love. And what reflection that she showed. So hopefully everybody here can find something within her, something that mine have taught her, something that she has showed a difference or made a difference in life and be that to somebody else. Show that to somebody else. And maybe, and just maybe, we might end up in God's memory too. But I can talk for a long time. Nobody else want to talk. No, I don't want to take I'm not uh, like that. Everybody in my family know I'm the one that's going to be low. <laughs> but this is the occasion that I think I want to speak. But uh, it's just beautiful to see everyone gathered, even on a sad occasion. You don't really have to be sad, but it is a sad occasion. True. Okay, well, I got, I got somebody who's going to shut me up. Come on up here, Trina. Oh, both of you. Okay. Trina and my lovely wife, Tanya. Um, I just wanted to share um, that before my mom, uh, Before my mom left this life and, and went on, she got a chance to come down to um, visit me in Alabama. I recently moved there last year, and um, one of my biggest fears was when I left, something would happen. And uh, she told me, don't worry about that. So go ahead on and see what else there was out there in life for me. So she was determined to come down to Alabama. And um, so we drove up here, me and my husband, uh, Thanksgiving. And we spent it at Tim's house. Um, I think that might have been the last time that you've seen her, right? Yeah. So we all had um, Thanksgiving. We all shared it there. And um, she was excited about going down to Alabama. And we had a great time. The weather was beautiful. It was 80 something degrees for the whole month of December almost. She was able to, um, we celebrated her birthday. We went out to dinner. We came back home. We had um, a little get together, not many. My brother-in-law and sister-in-law who lived down in Alabama. I said, my mom loved to play cards. So I wanted to make sure we, you know, brought that to her because there wasn't nobody there but me and him, so, and her. Um, so we enjoyed that. She stayed up till three, four that morning. We drank champagne, uh, Bel Air, that was her favorite. <laughs> Thanks to baby boy Tim, he put her on that. <laughs> um, after he told her about that, she could, you couldn't give her nothing else. <laughs> I want some Bel Air, the black bottle. Okay, mom. <laughs> <laughs> and then as, as they didn't have it either when I went to the store down in Alabama. I had to buy the, no, they did have the black bottle. She liked the white bottle too though, but. Um, anyway, so we enjoyed that. Also, while we were there in Alabama, Tanya got a chance to come as well and her family, and uh, we had a good time. Um, we had a good time down there. Um, we celebrated New Year's. New Year's, everyone was supposed to come down, um, but, it, you know, they didn't get a chance to come down, and she was um, had picked out her outfit that she wanted to wear for New Year's Eve. She picked out a beautiful black dress. She's wearing it now. She picked out her own clothes without us even knowing. Um, she picked out everything, T, from the earrings to the necklace to, <laughs> to the shoes. 
Um, so we enjoyed New Year's Eve. It was 85 degrees. We was outside. And you guys will get a chance to see some of those pictures, but it was beautiful. We was just outside snapping pictures um, in the sun so we can show everybody how hot it was while they was cold. <laughs> and uh, so we said, well, we started deciding what she wanted to see Tanya. She had never been to Oklahoma. So we um, set out for that trip. We met Tanya halfway in Arkansas Hunt plant and uh, took some more pictures. <laughs> Cause she was real big on pictures. You think I love pictures if y'all know me. She loved pictures. <laughs> um, but her favorite line was the whole time she was at my house was, I'm living my best life. And that's what she said. All the time, I'm living my best life. I'm living my life. Okay, Ma, go ahead. You know, I mean, just doing wonderful, just happy. Very, very happy the whole time that I spent with her. You know, she kept talking about my brothers and sisters that was not there, Toya and Tim. That's the baby girl, that's baby mm -hmm. boy. And no, no, her oldest, she definitely talked about him all the time. <laughs> Big brother. And, um, yeah, she just was very just happy. Mm -hmm. You know, so I found some peace in that because, you know, I, you know I hate to see her go, but, um, like I said, she, she enjoyed herself. She enjoyed us. That's why I just wanted to tell y'all that. And I just <laughs> <laughs> and I just want to pick up with her. Me and my husband, our youngest son, we moved to Oklahoma 16 years ago. So Ma would always say, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Okay, but we drove here all the time. It didn't matter. But when Clint and our youngest, we went to Alabama, mm -hmm. and this was in December. Mm -hmm. And I just kept so, so happy. She was so happy. Yeah. My little grandson is the one of the 13 I have. <laughs> I have one of my little grandsons here, and she, he would always get my cell phone, and he would look at all the pictures of the siblings, and he knew who he wanted to call. <laughs> so he would call my mother, and she said, I want to see him in person. So my son Xavier and his family made that trip, mm -hmm. and she enjoyed it. So like Trina was saying, that was in December. I wasn't expecting and to see And she never traveled, let's say that, but she right. was very happy to travel because right. she could travel. Mm -hmm. so, when, um, so in December, we thought, I thought that was, okay, I'm going to see Mom come back in the summer, you know. Well, Mom wanted to, Trina was go, is a nurse. She was going to finish her RN, and then and make a long story short, me and Clint met Trina and T, her husband, husband yep. and we all, we're nine hours apart, so we drove basically five hours in, and mm -hmm. we met in Little Rock, Arkansas. Sure and you'll see the pictures on the slide, but Ma was so happy. She was so, I'm going to Oklahoma. <laughs> so we took our pictures, got something to eat. They hit the road back. We hit the road to Oklahoma, and she talked all the way. And she got to Oklahoma. We in Tulsa. Ma was like, actually, she called Tim. Tim, I think I've been here before. I ain't never been to Oklahoma. <laughs> so <laughs> we pulled up into this place where Clint went in and got pizza. And she said, well, no, I'm talking about Tulsa. And so she said, called Tim. She said, Tim, I've been here. It looks so familiar. But anyway, she enjoyed it. And um, two days, she was she was there with us for a week. And two days, she said at my, she was fine the first three days. And, you know, she started getting sick. But um, I'm just so, and we brought her back here to get, you know, go to the doctor. But anyway, I'm like Trina, I'm so at peace because I'm thinking about the times I had with her. I'm just, because I hadn't seen her since COVID. Right. Just, you know, video, but in person. And so I'm at peace. I miss my mom. I love my mama. Each of us, Nana, Timmy, Toya, Trina, and me, we like this. We always had a bond like this. And we all was like this with our mother. Mm -hmm. We all had our own separate relationship, but that's how she was. But just to know that I shared that time and I was able to spend that time with her, you know, and to bring her back, me and my youngest son, Xavier, she was sick. But I couldn't let her know that. 
I seen it, but I couldn't show it because I knew I had to be strong for her. All I knew is I got to get my mama back to my siblings the way I got her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, uh, I just had double eye surgery, so I couldn't leave. She wanted to actually the reason she, she came, came to, to take care of her while she was having surgery. Right. I just had double eye surgery, and she came to help me. And I kept telling mom, you can't, she started getting sick. I'm like, I got to take you back to Zion. She said, but who's going to help you? I said, uh-uh, I get a couple of my grandkids. We, they come here, help me, because I wasn't I was able to see. And um, we got her home. It was a rough, 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 rough. And she just looked, and I couldn't show it. I couldn't show her that I knew she was sick because of her breathing because I didn't want nothing to happen to her on the road. I just knew I need to get her back what to What she do when she got home? And so, <laughs> what so I'm a nervous they wreck. They've been pushing her around the whole time, but what did she do when it was time to get out the car? Xavier told so her. my son, we pushing her in the wheelchair, pushing her from my house. Mm -hmm. We had to do a lot of rest stop, giving breathing treatments, oxygen, just a lot. So my son pushing her. So we got her home. Mm -hmm. Soon as we get to the house, so and, and, and plugged up her oxygen and gave it to her. And we go up at her house. She got stairs to go to the bedroom. I said, Mom, how we going to get you upstairs? And this is what she told me. She said, girl, I mean, just pepped up. She was like, what you mean how I'm going to get up those stairs? I'm going to get up there like I been get up there. got up there. And I said, oh, you can walk now. <laughs> it uh, took us a nine-hour trip, 15 hours to get you here. <laughs> but you gonna walk okay so we laughed about it and guess what she did and, and you know did. and i had surgery i brought her in tuesday we got here in, in zion 3 30 tuesday morning and i had to be in surgery mm -hmm. at 11 o'clock on wednesday so my son drove took us like 15 hours on the night that's how sick she was and i i remember we stayed at the house till five o'clock she had to get sleep because I couldn't drive. I was with my eyes. Was, I couldn't see real good. And um, he slept, and we hit the road. And guess what time I got back? I only had a couple hours to get myself prepared for a major eye surgery. Mm -hmm. And I never talked to her again because I was in the hospital. But just all that to say that she is going to be deeply missed. Mm -hmm. All her grandchildren, her great-grandchildren, great -grandchildren, nieces. nieces brother, sister, nephews, nephews, you know, cousins, everybody. And we Friends. all is a tight knit family as well, immediately as well as as well as extended. Mm -hmm. But um we just got to do it, you know. And uh she taught us all well. And that bond that she created in us, it is still continuing. That's right. It has to. That's it. <laughs> 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 okay. Well, um, I guess it's looking like it's almost time to eat. Um, <laughs> I say that because if you know this family, we enjoy our food. <laughs> Don't come between us and our food now. Um, so what we're going to do now uh, is just close the, so close the session out. And I uh, just want to make an announcement that the uh let me find okay the repast is located if you deciding to come in the middle page where it says repast that's the address uh, if you care to come out sit down enjoy some stories about mine get some good to eat and uh whatever you like whatever motivates you to come you're more than welcome to come so what we're going to do at this point, we're just going to close this out. And if you want to do a last viewing of Sandra as you go out, uh, we, we will start right here with the family. 
And when they're done, we can just kind of, in an organized fashion, just peel from there and work a while. So, um, but we appreciate everyone coming out. It it's really shows a lot. So we're just going to close this out now. Family, if you want to view, can you please remain in your seats until I get to your road? That way we can do things decently and in order. He wants me to, yeah, we just play this out. And where do, where do I get that sound from while everybody is just in the seat? I go to audio and vocals, and we'll just let it play, play it all. There you go.
Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, it's tiny gun. Look at all the nut ass kids.
Yes, yes, yes. Oh, no, 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 not a service, but when he, we are really sick. And since her mother, since her daughter, which is my wife, her head and her all, we thought this was appropriate, but this is our life. Yeah. Can I please have three people to assist with flowers? Three people to assist with flowers. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Two. 